on the 21st of February 2022, Atlas dropped a trailer for a Megami Tensei game. No, not for Persona. No, not for Shin Megami Tensei either. But for Soul Hackers 2? <laughs> of all the games. Now, not everyone may have the same viewpoint to how they discovered and watched the Soul Hackers 2 trailer, but here is my point of view. For me, it began on Twitter. I kept getting tweets from Atlas's Twitter account. They tweeted out a link directing to a website. In that website was a countdown timer. I think I discovered that website when around it was four or five days remaining. And man, <laughs> those four or five days felt like they took forever. <laughs> but upon inspection on that website, it was clear to me that it had something to do with soul hackers. So I thought it was going to be an HD port of soul hackers to modern systems, I thought. As an Atlas fan myself, I own a physical copy of Soul Hackers 1 for my new 3DS. And I wouldn't mind owning a digital Steam copy of it. Now, I really wanted to see the countdown timer through on that website. I wanted to be all like, 3, 2, 1, yay, HD remastered, I knew that. But, eh. I was unable to see that through, because that day, I had to go to the dentist, so I couldn't make it back in time. And so, when I got home from the dentist, as soon as I reconnected my smartphone back online, a large pile of new videos popped up, and one of those new video feeds caught my attention. It was from Atlas. I looked at the thumbnail and the title. And I was all like, what? A Soul Hacks 2 trailer? Really? I thought it was going to be a trailer for a modern port of Soul Hackers 1. I didn't think Atlas wanted to develop a sequel, because I thought they were done with that series. No, I'm not complaining. In fact, I'm glad that it's a sequel, because I'm getting a little bit too tired of Atlas re-releasing their games for the hundredth time. You know, on the 3DS, if you <laughs> know about the 3DS and Atlas, then you realize that Atlas just <laughs> pushed out a lot of 3DS re-releases out the door. You know, Devil Survivors, Soul Hackers, Strange Journey, even Etrian Odyssey. <laughs> Not just Megami Tensei games, but anyways, I am glad we're getting a Soul Hacker sequel and on the PC as well. That too caught me by surprise, and that's basically what was going through my head when I saw the thumbnail and watched the trailer. I didn't think that Atlas wanted to revisit the Devil Summoner series. I thought they were done with that, like I said. I mean, the last time Atlas released a Devil Summoner game was in 1997 for the Sega Saturn. Unless you mm, count the... Raido Kusunoa games on the PS2 from 2006 to 2009. That's why I thought Atlas at that point was done with the Devil Summoner series. And that's why I was surprised when I watched the trailer that it was a sequel to Soul Hackers 1 and not a PC port of the first game. When I saw the countdown, I thought Atlas was going to pull a Square Enix on me. You know, what they did with The World Ends With You on smartphones. Anybody remembers that? I thought Atlas was going to do the same thing, because I was thinking... Well, since the 3DS's eShop is going to close down next year, now would be a good opportunity for a lot of non-Nintendo games to jump ship to other platforms. Like Rune Factory 4 for example. By the way, speaking of Nintendo and ports, I was surprised to find out that Soul Hackers 2 wasn't announced as well for Nintendo Switch. That's odd, I think. I mean, since Atlas had released their games on the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS, and for the Nintendo Switch. I thought Atlas would, you know, 
follow that up on the Switch, I thought. So, why pass up on the Switch now all of a sudden, when Atlas in 2021 released Shin Megami Tensei 5? I think it is odd that Atlas is, for now, passing up on the Switch. It sort of reminds me how Square Enix in the past did not develop Final Fantasy 7 for the Nintendo 64, but instead gave it to the PlayStation. Now I've seen and heard different people's opinion on YouTube too why Atlas is saying no to the Switch, but in my personal opinion, I theorized that maybe Atlas wanna pass up on the Switch because they maybe wanna go for a more mature target audience. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Apocalypse released on the Nintendo 3DS. The Nintendo 3DS. A console that a lot of parents bought for their kids to play Super Mario. And not for something bloody and traumatic as Shin Megami Tensei. I mean, I think it is unbelievable to this very day that... <laughs> Atlas released SMT4 and Apocalypse on the 3DS. <laughs> I think Atlas made a consciously weird decision there, but but anyways, this is basically my theory as to why I think Atlas is passing up on Nintendo Switch for now. But you know, not that I'm complaining, but are we ever? going to get a port of Soul Hackers 1 on modern systems 2023 or 2024 or you know like I've been saying the eShop is going to close down soon so now would be a good opportunity for Atlas and all other non-Nintendo games to port over their games to modern systems Atlas <laughs> doesn't have to do you know better graphics or a new character <laughs> A plain Jane port of a lot of their games, in my opinion, is just as fine. But prior to the Soul Hackers 2 trailer, I don't think most people, or quote unquote Atlas fans, had heard of the Devil Summoner series. <laughs> well, okay, now you have, since, you know, the Soul Hackers 2 trailer dropped. And a lot of people don't even realize that Soul Hackers belongs to the Devil Summoner branch of the Megami Tensei family. Well, okay, now you know that too, but <laughs> you know. By the way, about that, I couldn't help but notice that Atlas took out the Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner from its title, and now it's just called Soul Hackers 2. I mean, Atlas did this previously with the Persona games. Persona is sort of part of the Megami Tensei family. Because at one point, Persona used to be called Shin Megami Tensei Persona before Atlas removed that and just called it Persona. But <laughs> as I was saying about the Soul Hackers 2 trailer, uh -huh, one other thing that stood out for me with the trailer was that I didn't think that it was going to come out so soon, this August. This August? As in... August 2022 this year? What's the catch? Is there a trade-off for Soul Hackers 2 coming out so soon? Please don't tell me Soul Hackers 2 is uh God forbid a smartphone S game? When I watched the Soul Hackers 2 trailer I couldn't help but get the impression that Soul Hackers 2 could be another Liberation DX2. But I hope I am wrong about that, I hope. I thought for sure that Soul Hackers 2 was going to be at least a 2023 release. Because as far as I know, Atlas is not a big company and never has been. Atlas's Wikipedia page which hasn't been updated that well, I'm sad to say, reads that they, by 2018, have over 270 staff members. So I am amazed that with just 270 staff members, they can push out an 
August 2022 release. That baffles me. But yeah, this is basically all I want to say for today. But before I close off today's pod vid, I think I'll cap it off by talking about the trailer and compare it side by side with Soul Hackers 1. Starting with the story. Now, spoilers for those who haven't played Soul Hackers 1. In Soul Hackers 1, the girl in the box art, Nemissa, is not really the protagonist. She travels with the real protagonist and his friends as a partner in crime, you could say. <laughs> and she is the, you could say, the guiding light that drives the story forward, if you know what I mean. But what about Soul Hackers 2? And this new alleged protagonist, you know, Ringo, right? What is her role going to be? It seems to me that, based on what I see in the trailer, she seems to be the protagonist, it seems. While the guy in the red and black attire seems to me like, I think, a party member? Maybe? If Ringo is the new protagonist, then does this mean that she's going to play both parts in Soul Hackers 2? Both as the one that moves the story forward and as the main protagonist? Or is she going to be the new Nemissa? Or is <laughs> the role of Menissa the guy in the red black attire? Or maybe not, who knows. But aside from the story, I like to talk about Soul Hackers 2's tone because that caught my attention too. The game's tone, look and colorful cast of characters really stands out. And it worries me. When I saw how colorful everything was in comparison to its predecessor, my alarm bells went off. I mean, if I watched the trailer without looking at the title, I would have thought this was, oh I don't know, Tokyo Mirage Session? <laughs> because I don't remember Soul Hackers 1 being this colorful. So I'm going to be very cautious about my potential purchase. When I think of Soul Hackers, I think of its cyberpunk-esque dystopian future-esque <laughs> tone and not Tokyo Mirage Session. I'm sorry but... <laughs> That is the best description I can give for Soul Hackers 2. It reminds me of Tokyo Mirage Sessions. This is why I feel kinda bummed out about Soul Hackers 2. I was really hoping that Soul Hackers 2 would maintain its original tone and look. But you know, if the game is fun, then I am <laughs> going to retract my personal complaints and just enjoy the game. Who knows? We'll see come August. But in conclusion, I think it is great that Soul Hackers 1 is getting a sequel. So everybody, thanks for tuning in for today. So I guess I'll see you all either next week or... You know what? Before I cap off today's episode, I'm going to talk about episode 3 of Hero or Villain, Mr. Medicker. Everyone, I'm happy to report that episode 3 has finally gotten off ground. I'm about 10% or maybe less than 15% in its production. But I'm happy to report that things are finally moving. Sluggishly, I'm afraid. It goes sluggish thanks to Elden Ring. <laughs> I've been playing Elden Ring a lot. But anyways, that's all I want to say for today. Thanks for tuning in everybody. You'll hear from me again. Bye bye for now.